Lisa Laba Yanyu Zale Liko Liko Kazid Yanyu Vakara Liko 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 Kazid Yanyu Vakara Liko Hi friends, Parklet here again. Welcome to enchanting land of Latvia where ancient traditions and vibrant culture come alive during the midsummer celebration. Join us today as we embark on a journey to discover the preparations and customs surrounding this magical festivity. What are you doing, Lydia? Oh. I'm getting ready for the evening. I am making hatteries for three people, for me, Mick, and one of Yanis, Okay. we are going to meet tonight. Nice. And uh, you, you choose all the flowers, all the flowers are blooming at this time of the year, but it's kind of selection by yourself, what type of flowers would you like to put? You know, I put uh, a little different for me, a little very nice. Middle more blue flowers for men. You can put also a little yellow. Any any grass which is blooming at this time of the year, you can put in. But the most important thing of all that is the oak tree leaves. Yeah, you you make it from the oaks. Very sweet. Yes. Midsummer, known as Yani in Latvia, is a time when the sun reaches the highest point and nature is in full bloom. It's a celebration of light, joy, and the abundant harvest that lies ahead. But before the festivities begin, there is much to do to prepare for this beloved occasion. The tradition of cutting the grass before the midsummer celebration holds deep cultural significance. As the summer solstice approaches, Latvians take great pride of meticulously trimming their lawns and needles. This practice serves both practical and symbolic purposes. On a practical level, it ensures that the outdoor spaces are well maintained and ready for the festivities that follow. So, it's Ligo. Ligo evening. Tomorrow will be John's day. Hay is dry. You should cut, cut the grass around your house at this time of the year. Symbolically, cutting the grass is believed to ward off evil spirits and bring good luck and prosperity to the coming season. One of the most cherished traditions of midsummer is the weaving of the flower wreath. These beautiful crowns made from wildflowers and herbs are worn by both men and women as a symbol of the summer solicit and to bring good fortune. And let's not forget about a unique and charming tradition during midsummer in Latvia, the decoration of cows. Yes, you heard that right. In many rural areas, Cows play a special role in the festivities. As part of the celebration, local farmers decorate their cows with handmade garlands, colorful ribbons and even fresh flowers. This ancient tradition is believed to bring good luck, health and fertility to the herds and the entire community. I've tried to approach the cows of our neighbors, but I didn't have a good luck. They're all following you. <laughs> I need to get her across. <laughs> <laughs> they all came to see you. Hello. Hello. I wanted to make very large. I wanted to make very Latvian movie with cows and. That was pretty Latvian. All the cows were chasing you. <laughs> and even the bullies 
here and I'm afraid of them. <laughs> Come on, Bull is not happy. Sure he's not. There's the bull. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You see, they like hay we gave them. Yeah, they like the hay. Look, there's so many little ones. Come here. Come. <laughs> and there's one black cow. Sure. They are kind of half wild cows <clears throat> because uh, they are uh, all summer and all winter. But they're happy cows. Yes, on the field. They don't live in the house. They even in the winter stay on the field. Oh, wow. That's the type of the cows. There are, I think, around 30 here, maybe. And they, all the season, and uh, and this is a meat cows, not milk cows. Small babies, they burn on the field. They eat milk of mother cow, and, you know, they grow together. And, mm. yeah. They're nice. And they don't have horns, as you see. They don't have horns. Even yeah. the bull doesn't have a horn. No, no. This is the type of the cows without horns. Good. Yes. I like cows without horns better. <laughs> Yuris and Datsis. I was afraid of the bull. You know, I've got inside. Yeah, that's good. The but bull was, was behind all the other cows. Otherwise, you might have been run over. Yes. He's giving me the eye. He wants me to sure. go away. Sure. <laughs> He's quite confused. Another essential element of midsummer in Latvia is the rich and vibrant folk cloth. Passed down through generations, these woven textiles are a testament to the country's deep-rooted cultural heritage. Folk cloth is adorned with vivid geometric patterns and symbols inspired by nature. These patterns are believed to carry deep meanings, reflecting the connection between the people, the land, and the cycles of life. The art of creating folklore is a painstaking process, requiring skill, precision, and the eye for detail. Local artisans spend countless hours waving these beautiful textiles, preserving the traditions of their ancestors. During midsummer, you will find many Latvians proudly donning their traditional clothing. As a midsummer celebration unfolds, the sight of decorated cows and presence of folk clothes remind us of the deep-rooted traditions and the love Latvians have to their cultural heritage. Whether you are a visitor or a local, Midsummer in Latvia is an experience like no other. From the vibrant markets to the joyful dances and the warm glow of bonifiers, it's a celebration that brings people closer, reminding us of the beauty and vitality of this remarkable country. Join us next time as we continue to explore the world's captivating traditions. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel for more fascinating cultural journeys. Until then, celebrate life, celebrate love and celebrate midsummer in Latvia. Your Sparklet.